The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Some sulfur and molasses for. No, I think the doc will know best what to do for him, son. He's a pretty sick coach. Sure hope he does. He will. It's his business. Doc sure must know his business. Taking care of people and horses both. Stop Fred, Mark. He must be on the call. Let's see if the marshal knows where he is. Doctors have to go to school for a long time, Paul? As a matter of fact, they do, Mark. Doctors, lawyers, judges, they all have to have a lot of schooling to do their jobs. What's wrong, Micah? The man got bushwhacked outside of town. Doc seen what he can do from bushwhacked. That's all open country. That's the puzzling part. The shot seemed to come out of nowhere. The two deputies were taking him over to Silver City to be a witness in a court trial. There ain't not much medicine can do for a dead man. Might as well open the jail door right now. Let's slate out. Slate Burroughs? That's right. Oh, uh, Deputy Phil Rogers, Lucas McCain, his son Mark. Pleased to meet you, Mr. McCain. You were talking about Slate Burroughs. That's the gunslinger, isn't it, Paul? That's right, son. You've heard of him, same as everyone else. Judge Marks at Silver City has been trying for years to get a case that'd stand up against him in court. He had one, so he got killed. Oh? What did he have on him? A month back, Slade killed a man near Silver City. But he claims he was visiting his brother in Arizona Territory at the time. This man was a witness to the killing. Well, that's the same man, all right. You know him? Mikey, you remember last month when I was over in uh, Silver City on some cattle business? Well, I remember, Paul. That's the time I stayed overnight at Hattie's. That's right, son. Well, I saw this man riding with Slade and another rider out near the Landon Ranch. That's where the killing took place, the Landon Ranch. Well, the third rider, I seem to recollect, was, a, was an older man with a beard. That's Elijah Matter and the man Slade killed. Mr. McCain, you've just cut Slade Burroughs' Arizona alibi clean out from under him. Looks like you're our new witness. Now, look here, Deputy. You're rushing things a mite fast. Hey, he can place Slade near the, near the Landon Ranch right before the killing. So could he. Look what it got him. Lucas, you want to get mixed up in this? When's the trial set for? This Friday. I'll be there. Well, there's nothing more I can do. I'll see you, gentlemen. So let's go outside and tell Doc about Blue Boy. Mr. McCain, Carl and I will give you safe conduct to Silver City. Well, if it's all the same with you, gentlemen, I'll get there by myself. We come to town to get Doc, but now my fellow's gonna be a witness. Witness? What for? Well, he's gotta go to Silver City. What well, he knows is gonna hang Slade Burroughs. Mark, where's Doc Burridge? Well, he's getting his hat and coat, Paul. It's so long, Freddy. That sure is something, with Pa being a witness against Slade Burroughs. You shouldn't have done that, son. What? Boast in that way about me testifying? But everyone's heard of Slade Burroughs, and you're gonna see he get strung up. Hold on now. I don't know whether I'm gonna do anything of the kind. I saw something. It's up to me to get up in court and say so. I've always told you to tell the truth. That's all I'm gonna do. Already, let's go. Oh, yeah, Doc. 
Why don't you jump in the back and let Doc sit up there? You want to take care of this for me, Mark? Sure. Yeah. Lucas McCain's one of the best liked men in North Fork. He's going to make Judge Marks mighty happy. Sure. He gets there alive. The main thing Marks to keep him warm. Try and stop him from kicking off the blanket. What is it, Doc? It's a pretty sick coat. Chance he won't pull through. Little boy's pretty special to Mark. There's something else again. Whoever gunned that witness will be after you next. I told him I'd go, Doc. What you have to say isn't that important. You didn't actually see anything. I saw Slate Burroughs. What happens to Mark? Something happens to you. Now, a man lives by certain principles, Doc. If you take those away, you might as well be dead. Well, sometimes principles have to bend a little. You start bending principles, they're not principles anymore. Like the fellow says he wants to be a little dishonest. It just can't be done. You're a darn fool, Lucas. Well, thanks, Doc, for coming out. <laughs> Mark's a fine boy, Lucas. Real fine boy. What do you got for lunch, Freddy? A couple of eggs, bad butter. Cake. Trade you a tomato for an egg. Sure. Know what my pa says? What? That your pa's going to Silver City to testify against slave girls. Well, what about it? Says he's never going to get there. Any more than that last witness. Well, nobody's going to bushwhack my pa. Your pa's no different than anyone else. Well, I know my pa, and if he says he'll get there, he'll get there. He'll get there in a pine box. That's how I'll get there. You take that back. I'm not taking anything back. <laughs> Come on, fight. Oh, good to see you, Lucas. Hi, Bruce. Hey, this is a nice working hinge. Well, the least I can do for that Slade Burroughs witness is not to slam the lid on him. Put it down gently. <laughs> Hinges are a lot better than getting nailed in. Saw your boy Freddy in town yesterday. He's growing fast in the beanstalk. Your boy Mark's Freddy's best friend. Uh, look, Lucas, while you're gone, the rest of us, Jenkins, Crown, March, and me, we'll look after the ranch for you. Well, I'll only be gone a couple of days. Well, we just want you to know that we'll keep an eye on things. Sure, Tommy, I know what you mean. There you are. Afternoon, Hattie. Well, if it isn't the town hero, Lucas McCain. Well, don't you start on me, Hattie. I just stopped by to see if you take care of Mark for me. Why, of course I'll take care of him. But you make me sick. Huh? You heard me. All day long, I see people here in this store, but that don't mean anything. Come nighttime, I go home, what have I got? Nothing but a cat named Penelope that meows and claws up my best overstuffed chair. I got nothing and nobody. And there are a lot of other folks in this town that are just as lonely as I am. And yet you don't find them gallivanting off, risking their necks, and they got nothing to lose. And then there's you. You got a fine son. And yet you just can't wait to let somebody use you for target practice. Everybody in North Fork's got me as good as buried. Well, you can't fight what you can't see. Loneliness is just about the hardest thing a person has to live with. I'd give anything to have that boy of yours for good, but I happen to know how much parents mean to a kid. I should. I never had any. Man has certain principles, Hattie. I'm a woman, Lucas. Don't you talk to me about principles. 
Principals never tucked a boy into bed at night, or principals never washed behind his ears when he needed it. They're the only things that make a boy into a man. Thanks, Heidi. Son, you may just have to face up to it. I don't want you to go to Silver City, Paul. I know you don't, Mark. Freddy's Paul says you won't come back. I say I will, Mark. Now let's get you to the well and get that face washed, huh? looking wooden kimono you got there. Well, I figure a man deserves a little consideration when he dies. Most of them get little enough while they're alive. Amen to that. You, uh, just riding through, mister? No, I got some business to attend to in Northbrook. Good luck to you, mister, during your stay here. Thanks. It's awful big and lonely at night, doesn't it, son? Say, uh, whose horse is that outside? Well, that's Brad's. He's washing up out back. Brad? Brad who? I don't know. He's the one who fixed up Blue Boy. Blue got something special for him. Oh? It's awfully early for a stranger to be up doctoring someone else's horse. He didn't come this morning, Paul. He slept in the barn last night. Oh, 
man usually comes to the door to ask when he wants a night's lodging. What's the difference, Paul? Look how he's helped Blue Boy. Brad's my friend. You act in haste, son. You repent in leisure. What's that mean, Paul? It means it's best to make friends slowly, son. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Brad Davis. I told Paul about how you helped Blue Boy, Brad. Well, I sort of have a way with animals. Well, yeah, I guess you have. We're grateful to you. You're grateful enough to give a hungry man some breakfast, Mr. McKenna. I sure could use some. Hey, me too, Paul. Well, that makes three of us. Let's go. You got a good sized spread to tent here alone, Mr. McCain. Alone? There's two of us. Where are you heading for? Well, I thought I might find some work in Silver City. Heard in town, you might be heading that way yourself. Paul's gonna be a witness. I told you not to go boast about that, boy. What are you leaving, Mr. McCann? Maybe we could ride together. Well, I don't rightly know, Mr. Davis. Come on, Brad. Let's see if Blue Boy will eat something. Well, thanks for breakfast. You've got to leave for school in 15 minutes, Mark. Yes, Paul. He's a good boy. I think so. You like your pal a lot, don't you, Mark, huh? I sure do. I love him very much. Well, your father's a brave man. I know, but I wish he wasn't going. Yeah, I thought you were mighty proud of him. I am, but... Well, something might happen to him. Well, do you love anyone, Brad? Only person I've got is a brother. Well, you wouldn't want anything to happen to him, would you? No, Mark, I sure wouldn't. He looks out for me, I look out for him. Our town's marshal. Guess he wants to know when Paul's leaving for Silver City. Something wrong, Brad? No. No. Deputy Rogers figured it out and sent word over to me. That's how it must have happened. Whoever did the killing used a rifle with the telescope mounted right on it. Well, that's quite an idea. I've heard about such guns, but I've never seen one before. Oh, a lot of them were manufactured back east during the war. Sharpshooters used them to pick off enemy officers at half a mile and over. Out in this part of the country, they're scarce as hen's teeth now. Well, at least I know what I'm up against. You're still going? Well, a telescope's not much good at night, Micah. Unless you're looking at the stars. Oh, well, you're going after dark. Yeah, tonight. Micah, I want you to do me a favor and take Mark to Hattie's in the morning. That way I'll be in Silver City and nobody will know I've even left. Don't worry about the boy. No, much obliged, Micah. Visitor? No, just a stranger riding through. See you tonight, Lucas boy. Time for school, isn't it, Mark? Go on, boy, get your lunch. Go on. Something troubling you, Mr. McCain? It's a pretty big rifle boot, not to have any gun at all in it. I sold the gun. Man can always do with a little extra money. Maybe you didn't sell it. What's that supposed to mean? I saw the stock of a rifle in that boot this morning. I don't think you had time to sell it between now and then. You're a very observant man, Mr. McCain. 
Like I said, he's a nice boy. You wouldn't want any harm to come to him. So let's get him off to school. You'll stay a while and look after Blue Boy, won't you, Brad? I sure he will, son. He's our friend, isn't he? Now, you better get going. I don't want you to be late for school. Bye, Brad. Bye, kid. Come back and see us again, Brad. Sure will, son. You handle that very smart, Mr. McKenna. Now, there's no reason why this can't go back where it rightfully belongs. It's a Lyman special. Ten power scope, full windage, elevation knobs. Optics are the best made in Europe. I don't think there's more than three like it west of the Mississippi. You don't need a telescope at this range, mister. What are you waiting for? Now, let's get to the barn and get you settled up. I'd rather have him think that you set out for Silver City and got it on the trail, same as the first witness. That's Slade paying you for this, mister. I don't kill for money. I got feelings same as you. You got your boy, I got my brother Slade. Brother or no, he's not much of a man to kill for. I couldn't agree with you more. He's just downright mean. That's one part about this that I don't like. Leaving that nice boy of yours without a father just for the likes of my brother. But he is my brother. He looks after me, I look after him. It's an old family custom. Anyway, that kid of yours will grow up with or without you, McCain. All kids do. So that's how it is. Now get in the barn, we'll get you saddled up. Get your saddle over there. Brad! Brought you back, Mark. I got to thinking about what you said, Paul. What I said? Yeah, outside when I was leaving for school. Oh, well, I was just trying to get you out of the way so you wouldn't get hurt. Before you told me, make friends slowly. Then you said, Brad's our friend. It just didn't add up. Well, I'm mighty glad it didn't. Did he kill the first witness? That's right, Mark. Life sure is funny, Paul. How's that? How he can be so good to animals and so mean to people. That's a sign you're growing up, son. What do you mean? Well, Mark, the older you get, the more questions don't have answers. Oh, Lucas. Matty, he fixed you a little something with the road. Keep this side of the saddle. It'll keep the soup from getting cold. Thanks, Micah. Take care of things, huh? Mark and I got fishing plans for sun up tomorrow. Well, oh, that's fine. Bye, son. Bye, Paul. I'll be back in a couple of days. I know you will, Paul. And don't forget to wash behind your ears, huh? I will, Paul. Good boy. Mm -hmm.